What's good everyone, it's Steve from Sneaker Tech Talk back with another video today. And for today's video, we are gonna take a look at the Nike Airship PE in the Team Orange colorway. So starting off with the box, as you can see here, you do have a white box with a Team Orange Nike logo and check. As you can see here, it says 1984 Airship PE. And then on the size tag, it does say Jordan Airship PE SP. The colorway is white, Team Orange white. And I did get these in my usual size 10 and a half. So as far as the Nike or Jordan Airship PEs, these were made for Michael Jordan in 1984. This orange pair didn't come out in 1984 in the PE pair, but in the preseason, he was wearing this one right here, the band pair. This is the actual band shoe from 1984. And this is the Nike Airship Pros, as you can see here. It does say Air Jordan at the back. And this is the actual band shoe, but Michael Jordan was not a huge fan as of the overall height of the shoe, as this shoe was a bit higher and the overall outsole of this shoe as well. I believe it was the Pro Circuit outsole here on the Nike Airship Pros. He wasn't a huge fan of the overall build of this shoe. And then in the meantime, as the Air Jordan 1s were being made, they did slap the Air Jordan 1 midsole and outsole here on the Nike Airship PEs. And it's overall more of a mid-cut shoe as well. But starting with the outsole, you do have that greatest traction of all time. It's a fantastic traction pattern even here today. And you do have that team orange hit at the bottom and the Nike Air in the middle. And then the midsole as well, like I said, it's overall just that Air Jordan 1 midsole, that rubber cup sole. And then working your way up from that, you have some fantastic leather here on the Nike Airship PEs. It's better than most Air Jordan 1s, honestly, as you can see here. It's very soft, very supple, pretty much no break in time. And then as well, you have some great leather here on the orange swoosh. And then right here on the ankle collar as well. And then as far as some of the details go, you do have that oversized kind of fat swoosh here on the lateral side. More or less the same thing here on the medial side. At the back of the shoe, it does read Nike Air. And then on the tongue, you do get that nylon tongue with the Nike Air at the top. And one thing about the tongues on the Nike Air ships is it's very tall, as you can see here. It's a lot longer than the usual Air Jordan 1 nylon tongue. So that is one thing you'll notice here on the Nike Air ships is they do have a very long tongue. And then on the inside of the liner here, you do have the stamp for the size tag. Obviously, this is a size 10 and a half. So it's a pretty simple overall shoe, but I enjoy it. It is history. And one other thing to notice, note as well here is in the forefoot, you do have this separate piece of leather here that the laces go through. And it kind of acts as a wing where the laces really pull your foot and it wraps it around your forefoot. So on hard lateral cuts, at least back in the day, if you were hooping in these, it would keep your foot within the shoe and preventing your foot from sliding over the footbed. And behind that as well is actually a bungee. So it adds some flexibility here in the Nike Airship. So again, it's a pretty cool design feature here. Um, as far as the fit goes on the Nike Airship, I would say it's a safe bet if you go true to size. I went with my usual 10 and a half. My toe is right here near the end of the shoe, but overall they fit more or less the same as an Air Jordan 1 in my opinion. So whatever you are in an Air Jordan 1, if you want to pick up the Nike Airship, I would say it's a safe bet to go with the exact same size. So one other thing I wanted to cover as well is the overall shape. They really got that toe box slimmed down and nice and tapered. Jordan Brand is doing a fantastic job with the Air Jordan 1 High 85s and with these PE pairs as well. The overall toe shape on my pair is pretty amazing in my opinion. And I'm just gonna pull in the Pro pair here to do a quick comparison as far as materials and overall build. So like I said, the materials on the PEs is a lot softer to the touch as you can see here. It takes pretty much no break in time at all. Very soft material, great grade of material in my opinion. But here on the Pros, they are a more stiff leather. Not quite as stiff as the High 85s, the Jordan High 85s, 
but it's a bit thicker and a little bit stiffer as well. So an overall pretty good grade. Again, these released over in Italy exclusively at Backdoor Bottega. And again, such a fantastic release. The real Banshu finally coming to fruition a couple of years ago. Very happy to have both of these shoes in my collection. I actually have the white and red pair from the New Beginnings pack as well. So I think it's pretty cool that we're finally seeing the Nike Airship released to the public. The overall build of these two shoes are a little bit different. They both have that bungee system in the forefoot where the three eyelets are. Again, you have that here as well. And the perforations on the toe box. The toe box is a little beefier here on the pro pair versus this one being a little more slimmed down. And then again, the overall height of these two shoes, the pros are a little bit taller and the midsole is a bit thicker as well. And then the outsoles, as you can see here, differ a lot. You kind of have the Jordan 1 outsole on the PE pair and then the Pro Circuit outsole here on the Pros. So definitely two completely different built shoes but two very important shoes when it comes to the history of Nike and Jordan Brand, in my opinion, because he did play in both of these shoes before he ever donned a pair of Air Jordan 1s. And then as well, some people have been asking me why there are two sets of laces here in the pro pair. And that's the way Michael Jordan actually rocked these shoes back in 84. I'll throw up a picture or two of him playing in them or stretching, sorry. He did have both sets of laces like here in the Nike Airship Pros. And then again, on the Pro Pair, the tongue is just super tall. You do have that nylon tongue with the black and red Nike Air logo at the top. And you do get more of the same of the size tag being stamped on the inside. Very so fortunate again. to have both of these shoes, including the white and red pair in my collection. And here in 2023, we are gonna see an all white pair with some yellow accents and then an all white pair with kind of like pine green as well. Hoping to pick both of those shoes up. And as well, the price point of the Nike Airship is 140 USD, 190 here in Canada. So not bad for price for the overall build and quality materials. But let me know what you guys think as far as the comparison of these two shoes. What do you prefer for me on foot? I've worn both of them. I do have multiples of both of these. I would have to say on foot, the PE is just a little bit more comfortable, but when it comes to history, how can you turn away the actual banned shoe that was banned by the NBA back in 1984 for not following the uniform rule as far as colorways go for what you are allowed to wear within the shoes? And one other thing I'll touch on real quick is there is a React midsole. They did update the cushioning here in the Pros for 2020 having a more comfortable midsole here. It is still a rubber cut midsole everywhere else, but right here you do have that Nike React midsole. But that's gonna do it for today's video on the Nike Airship Pro and PE pair here in the Team Orange colorway. As always, if you guys could like, comment, and subscribe, that helps the channel a ton. Check out my Instagram over at 23MJ88, as it is an extension of my YouTube channel with all my pickups, basketball footage, and nostalgia as a whole. And keep it locked to the video for an on-foot portion at the end of the Nike Airship PE in the Team Orange colorway. Try and get grip, but it don't make sense Cause you can lose life on this fast ride